Good morning. Welcome to Skyline. Today, we're, our series is Let's Talk, and our word is submission. We're going to spend some time together in worship. We're going to spend some time in giving and prayer. And then we're going to come back to see what God has to say about submission. And we want you to be able to be involved. And so, uh, in, in streamers, go to description and pull up your program. For all of you, pull out your connection card, if you would, and fill that out. Uh, let us know who you are and interact with us. And then in the, on that connection card, you'll be able to, if you go down the bottom, there's a prayer box. And throughout the day, there's going to be things that will pop into your head and heart that you need prayer for. Fill that in because that allows us to pray for each other. You need it. We love to pray. So uh, if this is your first time with us, I hope this morning you find a place that you can call home. A place where you go, hey, I, I belong there. It's uh, just terrific to be together. It's terrific to worship together. It's really good to be able to have communion together. And today we get to do that. And so at home, if you would, just grab some crackers, some juice, either out of the refrigerator or the cupboard. If you don't have any, it's fine to use water as we do this together. I know the worship team's ready. I'm ready. So let's uh, stand up here. And at, on streamers, you turn it up and let's worship. All right, we're going to sing a new song this morning. So we sing this chorus together. You guys repeat after me. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. One more time. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. All right, y'all came to sing. Let's go. search the world but it couldn't fill me a man's empty praise the treasures that fade are never enough then you came along and put me back together satisfied here in your love oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing nothing is better than you I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountains is the God of the
ready to worship today, right? There it is. It's there. <laughs> so uh, we as a worship team actually started doing a 30-day devotional together um, about worship and the importance of worship and why we worship. And as I spent some time with God this week, um, a prayer came on my heart. So I'm going to invite you guys to maybe close your eyes, open your hands, lift your hands, but really open your hearts and pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, the outside world looks at us expecting us to be perfect just because we hold the title um, being called a Christian. And that's far from true. In fact, we fall every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. But I'm so grateful that you sent us Jesus to pay for that. And every single time we fall, we can come back to you knowing that your power is made sufficient in our weakness. We aren't perfect by any means, and that's why we need Jesus. That's why we need a Savior. So God, as we take communion later on today, let's remember that it's an opportunity for us to meet with you, that you're going to meet us there. An opportunity for us to acknowledge that we're not enough, and we are going to mess up. But because of the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, the slate is clean, and we are made new. Thank you so much for your never-ending love, your never-ending grace. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you guys to sing along. the place where you promised to be. I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here
you come, will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Sing, I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Unless you that never-ending love and that never-ending grace. And while we're worshiping, we're going to worship in gratitude and thankfulness for that never-ending love and grace. So I invite you to sing along, lift up your voices, all right? Let's sing together. Thank you. 
stay in that place, stay in that spirit, have a seat. At home, as much as possible, get rid of the distractions, get your elements ready. On campus and at home, clear your mind. Clear your spirit, your heart. We ask that of God, meet me here. The beautiful truth is, he has already said yes. The thing that keeps us from experiencing God's presence is that we're focused on everything else. So, if there's a thing, a worry in your life, for these few minutes, let that go. If there's a sin that you've been hanging on to, that you, you've been hiding, maybe everyone else knows about it, but you're hiding. Prepare to confess it. To turn away from it. To bring it to Jesus in his presence. You see, the things that keep us away from God, he's destroyed. The walls, the mountain, the ocean. He gave his body To pay for your sin it was broken to pay and and when he broke his body was broken for you and when you accepted that by faith the wall came down the ocean dried up the mountain flattened and you get to experience his presence and maybe you're like no 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 there's still dirt all over me. There's attitudes and there's, there's thoughts and there's words. And, and his blood was shed to wash you clean as snow. Can you, can you just envision that? Just flowing over you and now you're pure because of the power of the blood of Christ. We're going to take communion in God's presence, with God's presence. At home, if you take your bread, on campus, if you just peel back that first little piece there. fact that you have a hard time doing it doesn't mean that God leaves one bit. His presence is still here. The Bible says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of him. In God's presence, let's take the bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It can't be reversed. It can't be taken away. His presence is promised because of the blood of Christ, which is more powerful than any other force in the universe. 
Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. In his presence, let's remember his blood which was shed for us. Lord, we love you. We want to be right here with you. Thank you. Thank you for giving everything that we could be with you. In your name we pray, amen. Take a look at what we got coming up. Hi, everybody. My name is Joshua, and I'm here to tell you about how you and your family can get involved right now in the life of our church. If you need a way to stay connected with the people here at church, join a life group. Life group signups start this week. Be sure to check them all out on the Church Center app. Just hit the Groups tab on the bottom. And you can find one on different days, different times. There's one for everybody. Be sure to find yours. Spirit Day and Baptism are happening on September the 13th. And to make sure that we have enough room for everybody to be there, we're going to have four services. That's right, you heard it right, four of them. Let's take a look at the schedule. We're going to have our usual 9 o'clock and 1045 services, both on campus and streamed online, and we'll be serving an outdoor dining brunch at 950 for those attending those services. Then we're going to have two more services at noon and 130, but those services will be on campus only. We won't be streaming those online. We will, however, be having a second outdoor dining brunch at 1250 for those attending those two services. This will be a tremendous event, which is why we want you to commit to being here either live and in person on campus or streaming live online. The operative word there is live. Amazing things happen when we are of one mind and one accord together. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. If you've been reluctant to come to the live services, this is the perfect opportunity to experience what you may not even realize you've been missing all these months. If you have been coming to the live services, invite someone you haven't seen in a while to come with you at the same service. And if you decide to stay home, we completely understand, but we want you there with us in spirit. So mark your calendars, set a reminder, do what you have to do in order to tune in live that day so that we can celebrate together. Let's make this the best Spirit Day Skyline has ever seen and let's celebrate those who are making a declaration of faith by getting baptized, saying that Jesus is the most important thing in the world to them and that he is their Lord and Savior. So be sure to sign up on the Church Center app or on the website skylinechurchnj.org. I hope to see you there. Hey parents, Desi here. Just a reminder to check out our Sky Kids resources online at skylinechurchnj.org. Here you'll be able to find all kinds of goodies, including messages, activities, and songs to have fun with your kids at home. And for you students in Sky Youth, your message video also gets uploaded every Monday and is available all week so you can discuss it on Sunday together with your small group. For more info, please check out the comment section below this video. 
So you heard last week that we are starting 40 days of Stronger Together again on October 4th. This year, it's Stronger Together in Prayer. We need at least 10 facilitators this year. So be sure to go to the Church Center app, tap the Groups tab on the bottom, and find the 40 Days of Stronger Together event. Sign up to be trained as a facilitator. Now, you think, oh no, training? Oh, then that must mean it must be really elaborate. No, no, it's gonna be super simple. Can you turn on a TV? Can you serve refreshments? Can you read questions off of a piece of paper? I know you can. So come on, sign up to be a facilitator today. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. If you'd like to find out more information about everything you just saw, be sure to check out the Church Center app. You can also follow us on social media at Skyline Church NJ. We're always trying to post things to help you out throughout the week, and odds are if it's helping you, it'll help those around you. So like it, share it, do what you do, and I'll see you guys next week. Uh, just a quick announcement that uh, the splash at home so next week we're going to have church, church service, but uh, have it splash all over the place that uh, Heidi Petrago won the uh, resort. And so if you want to come over, contact Heidi. She'll let you know if you can come in. Uh, the second thing is uh, we sold out the house. Like we, uh, we filled registration, and so uh, that's a pretty cool, cool thing. We told you it's kind of like a church plant. You kind of build and grow as you go, and uh, that's pretty neat this morning as well. We're going to uh, pray for our giving. Before we do, I want to remind you that uh, God wants your heart, not your money. And so we want you to get that straightened out first. We want you to know Christ first, and from then come the gi comes the giving and the following up from there. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for giving to us. We thank you for your grace and how it transforms our lives. It changes us from the inside out. And so as we give to you, we ask that you would use this to help more and more people experience your grace and that kind of transformation. I specifically want to pray for some of the folks in our church, those who have, uh, are, are still working and going into places where they're, they're exposed to uh, COVID uh, in some way, form, or fashion. I want to pray for those that are they have to because of their health situation. They have to stay home. And, and I, I just pray for you to protect them, uh, for them to be able to find your comfort and your love. Pray for those who are struggling with, uh, with cancer. We pray especially for Linda. Uh, it's been amazing how long and what you've done in her life. And we continue to ask you for miracles, that you just keep uh, defeating that cancer. Then, Lord, I pray for those who, they feel alone. The, the result of the shutdown has gotten them in a place where they are not able to interact with people very much, and so they feel alone. I pray for us as a church to reach out to them and, and to pour into them, but also that they would reach out to us and reach out to each other so they would know that we would begin to be able to continue to, to experience not just your presence through what you've done for us, but your presence through each other. In your name we pray. Amen. A few months ago, I guess with everything happening with the quarantine, I was thinking about um, how I can give back and how I can help. Um, and I just really didn't know what to do. So I just, I prayed about it for a long time. And all of a sudden I had an idea for possibly doing a care package. So I reached out to two people from our life group who work in the service field, just to bounce some ideas off of them to have an idea of what we may want to put together. So after some discussion, texts and phone calls, basically we came up with um, doing a care package for children or teenagers who are going into foster homes. Well, specifically the adolescent population when we do remove them from their homes, they leave with little or nothing. Um, the majority of them, especially when we're in inner cities, travel with their belongings in garbage bags or shopping bags, grocery bags, um, things of that nature. A lot of times their parents are angry, so they don't want to send them with anything. Basically what we're looking to do is put those care packages together using a backpack 
and essentials like toiletries, soaps, deodorants, razors, toothbrushes, toothpaste, washcloths, things that they can use on an everyday basis necessities um, to help them acclimate a little bit better when they are placed either in a resource home or in a group home. It's very difficult when these children get placed in a home to open up to wherever they're being placed, either, either a resource parent or a group home, and ask for items as simple as toilet paper, wipes, undershirts, socks, brushes, combs. So this kind of makes the transition a little bit easier because a lot of times they do transition five to ten times within their first year of placement. We were looking at just doing it with our life group. And then I thought about how other life groups may want to participate too. And I reached out to someone from church and then they encouraged me to consider inviting the church family, our church members and participants to participate as well and contribute to the project. So we're really looking forward because this is an opportunity for people to, you know, work together and give back. Families can do this together as a family. Um, Individuals can create a whole packet with the book bags and the materials inside, or they can just get individual items or give a monetary donation and then we'll fill in whatever is missing at the end. Um, unfortunately, adolescents are not a population that maintain placement for long periods of time, and they do move often. And at least if they can bring one thing with them, they know they can pack their belongings over and over again into this one backpack or duffel bag or anything like that. There's several reasons to take part in a project like this. Um, I think that we've all just been really focusing on ourselves and on our families. And, you know, these children really probably haven't been attended to. There's a lot of things going on in terms of um, cases not being reported as much. So just an opportunity to really give back during this time. I saw that for the first time this week, and uh, I cried. This is, uh, this is what Skyline's all about. Our goal is to help mom and dad love each other in such a way that this never, ever happens. Um, I also want to uh, challenge you. Um, they're asking for 50 bags. Lori and I are going to make uh, 10 of them ourselves. And if you know Lori, those bags are going to be packed to the, to the gills. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of that and be able to go, hey, uh, I'll match that 10 or I'll, I'll beat that, please email me. We can have a lot of fun with that. But for our church, uh, they've asked for 50, but there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing 100 uh, or beyond 100 of those packets. It's, it's what we love to do. It's the opportunity to help somebody in the smallest of ways. So I encourage you to be able to, to move forward with that. So uh, let's talk. Our word for today is uh, submission, and so there is a dynamic that's happening. You can tend to feel like you're alone, but there's also a lot of uh, stress that you can't really identify necessarily where it's coming from. Like it's, it's this odd thing that's going on. You can't necessarily identify where it's coming from. And so a, n a number of our, our families are really struggling. Sometimes the, in couples, they're really struggling. And uh, one guy said to me, he says, I don't, I don't think I'm losing my faith, but, but it, it, it feels different. It feels like something's, something's wrong. And so first thing I want to say to you is this. I'm telling everybody this. Do not make big decisions during the COVID time. Don't do that. There's, there is a dynamic happening you don't understand, which is you've been separated. You, you've been separated from people that you really care about. And you're like, come on, it can't be that big a deal. Maybe it is that big a deal. And so don't, don't make big decisions during this, during this time. Don't think that this is the end of the relationship. This is who the... There's another dynamic going on that you may not understand. So we're going to kind of light on the part of it today in terms of what creates this clinch in your stomach. In your life, what causes stress, worry, anxiety? What is it that causes that stomach to knot up or, or your heart to feel like, ah, or the back of your neck, right? Right through here, you're all tense. You've got these big knots. 
in your shoulders? What causes that in your life? Well, I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about today right up front. All right, I'm going to give you kind of the whole message right up front, and then we're going to work through it uh, from there. It's this. The greatest source of anxiety and worry is when I'm in charge. It's when I'm responsible for the end result. It's when I need to get the credit. I need to defend myself. It's when my name is on the line. It's when I am going to build a life worth living my way. That's the source. It's not the only source, but it's the source. It's the greatest source. So what's, what's the opposite of that? The opposite of that is that the greatest source of peace is that when Jesus is in charge. That he is responsible for the end result. That he gets the credit and that his name is on the line. It's that Jesus is the one I trust because he's the only one that knows how to live a life worth living. Here's another statement. You may want to jot this one down. You may want to tweet this one. It's this. The greatest source of anxiety and worry is when I have determined I am in charge and I will force the world to submit to me. I will force the world to submit to me. Can can you relate to that? All these issues... You're trying to get to work. So you have a choice. You can rule the world, or you can submit to Jesus, who is the only one who has the power to make the world submit to him. You can rule your world, or you can submit to Jesus, who is the only one who has the power to rule the world. We're going to jump into a, a passage in, at the end of Ephesians. It's in Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, it doesn't use the word submission, but as you work your way through it, you're like, oh, I, 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 this makes sense. So here we go. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Whoa, wait a minute, time out. Wait, wait. Do you know what flesh and blood means, people? Our struggle is not against people. Now let's back up a second. How many of you, your worry and your anxiety... And your struggle that's not in your stomach has everything to do with people. It has everything to do with I can't get along with my spouse. It has everything to do with I can't get along with my mom, my dad. My kids are driving me crazy. My kid's 33 and I still feel responsible for him. That's anxiety and stress. My boss, my neighbor. Now we have the whole shutdown thing so we have lots of other people involved in in our lives, right? Right? Now, lest you think this guy who's writing this is like, well, yeah, sure, he, like, his life is probably great. He probably doesn't. He's in prison. And he's been imprisoned unjustly. He's been put into prison because he taught of God's love, of Jesus' forgiveness. And they came along and said, you're talking against the emperor. And they, they threw him in prison. He's unjustly in prison. And you know what he said? Listen, our war is not with people. My war is not with people. That's not what's happening here. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. There's a spiritual battle going on. Oh, by the way, does stress and anxiety, does, does that come, is that actually a physical thing? Well, certainly it feels like it. 
Because it is my stomach that tightens up, and it is my shoulders that get all tight. That's true. Matter of fact, the Bible, it's cool. The Bible calls it your heart, and it calls it, in other places in the Old Testament, it calls it your bowels, which is the tightening of your stomach. But it's your soul that feels stress. It's just your soul communicates to your body, and then your body responds to it. Your body doesn't get stressed out. Your heart, your spirit does. See, the battle in your life is not about people. It's, there's a spiritual battle going on. Now, so in this battle, what do these spiritual forces want? What would be success for them? Anxiety. They want you stressed out. They win when you stress out. They want you to be depressed. Hopelessness. The whole goal, their whole goal is hopelessness. They want you to be totally focused on yourself. To never be happy. In other words, there's never enough. No matter what you do and what you accomplish, you can't get there. But most of all, what do they want? They want you to be at war with your spouse. You see, what's the best way to destroy a kid's life? Make sure mom hates dad and dad hates mom. It's the best way to make sure that kid grows up mad at the world, discouraged, and hopeless. What's the best way to destroy you? Get you fighting with other people. If they can get you to fighting with other people, you'll never see the enemy. You'll never see what the problem is. So then he goes on and he says this, therefore, put on the full armor of God. Well, that's where submission comes in. Because all the things he talks about as, uh, that are the armor of God, the way you put them on is you submit to them. You submit to them. You go, I'm not in charge here. I'm here to do what God says. I'm here to hear what God says. I'm not here for my opinions. I'm not here for what I think. I'm not here for what I feel. I'm here to do what God wants me to do. I'm here to trust him. That's how you put on the armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. You can feel it. You can feel that there are forces that are trying to mow you over, trying to push you down. He says, this is where you stand. You put on the armor of God. You submit. Stand firm then in the belt of truth buckled around your waist. And then he walks through some things. So we're going to talk about what submission brings in terms of these things that you put on or that you have. First of all, submission brings freedom. Wait a minute. That, that should be a twister. Wait a minute. I, 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 submission? No, no. What do you think of when you think of submission? Lock me up. I, I don't get to make a choice anymore. I just have to do whatever you want. That's what submission is. Well, first and foremost, submission is always a choice. Slavery is not submission. Submission, I choose. This is what I choose to do. I make this choice to submit to this. Freedom comes from submission. He goes on to say, to the Jews who had believed, Jesus said, if you hold my teachings, you are truly my disciple. If you practice my teachings, if you submit to my teachings, you're truly my disciple. And then you will know the truth. Now, in the world that we live in right now, it's always been this way. It's not new. Everybody's trying to prove that they have the truth, that they know what's right. You have to follow them. You should trust them. You should do what they say because they know the truth. Knowing the truth doesn't set you free. It's practicing the truth. 
that set you free. Just because you can prove you're right doesn't set you free. It's practicing the truth that sets you free. Then you will know the truth and that truth will set you free as you begin to practice it. And so, we tend to think and feel that there's a lot of things that will set us, true, set us free. The evil forces in high places, they know all about this. Lust. Whenever you begin lust, what's it feel like? Doesn't matter if you're lusting after naked people or you're lusting after some drug or liquid that can make you feel a certain way or you're lusting after possessions or you're lusting after something your neighbor has it always starts the exact it starts the exact same way that looks good and that makes me feel good i bet if i got more of it i'd feel better matter of fact i'd be free and lust says it over and over again it says listen don't let yourself be told what to do by somebody else come with me come consume me and then you'll be free and so you try a little bit of it and what happens it feels good and then it doesn't feel good and so you got to have more and before you know it you are a slave to whatever it is you went after sometimes people at this point will go young people as if young old people don't have the exact same experience we have the exact same experience the only difference between us and you is we've been slaves longer so we know you turn into a slave everybody over 35 just laughed they got that they're like yeah that's really true what brings freedom submission see the opposite to lust is purity purity is awesome it brings freedom when you're pure you get to choose whatever you want only you only want to choose good things that set you more free what's the opposite how about a budget does budget represent freedom or slavery when you first get the budget when they first tell you to do a budget you're like you mean I don't get to spend my money the way I want to I have to do what the budget says yeah that's submitting to the budget now anybody who's ever submitted to a budget for longer than a year have discovered what it brings amazing freedom anybody who hasn't submitted to a budget for longer than a year realizes that spending your money whenever you feel like spending your money leads to slavery I now owe way more than what I have look at my check and look at my bills how did that happen because you didn't submit to the truth stability submission leads to stability in Ephesians he says in addition to this take up the shield of faith which can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one faith is when you trust God you say you know what I'm gonna make my decisions I'm gonna do my actions I'm gonna decide who I am I'm gonna decide what's right and what's good based on what Jesus says is true I'm gonna trust him for what's true I'm not trusting my teachers I'm not trusting uh, social media I'm not trusting my neighbor I'm not even trusting my parents I'm trusting what God says that's what I'm putting my faith into he says that's how you stop the flaming arrows of the evil one then in James he says this let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything he says when you when you face trials know that those trials are gonna they're gonna make you a mature person they're gonna set you free they're gonna make you powerful they're gonna help you so you can go through tough things in life and not be all tensed up and anxiety anxious and worried and then he goes and when you're doing this when this is happening when you're in the middle of it pray for wisdom pray for wisdom what's wisdom wisdom is knowing wait a minute this is going to lead to something good it's going no no no. I know it looks bad 
but God's going to use this to grow me. And then he says this, but when you ask, trust God, put your faith that he is going to answer. Because he always answers that prayer. Always. He says, don't be double-minded. Don't be like, okay, I prayed for that, but now I'm going to go with what I feel. I prayed for that, but I'm not going to submit to it. I'm going to go do what I feel. He says, such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. I, I'm the classic unstable guy when it comes to schedules. I personally, I don't even think it's my fault. I think it's my personality. That's my way out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this, this, and this done today. I do one and two, and I get to three, and I'm like, do I really want to do that today? And somebody calls, and off I go. Now, after three days, I'm really frustrated. I'm stressed out. You know why? I didn't get done what I was supposed to get done because I'm double-minded. I'm unstable. That's a simple thing. This is a big deal. When you submit, submission creates stability, and stability gets you where you want to go. Stability allows you to build what you want to build. Stability allows you to love people in a consistent way that you may have never seen before. And peace. Submission brings peace. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The whole gospel is about peace. It's about God bringing peace to you. You and God being peace at one, with one another. He goes on to say, and with your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel that comes from the gospel of peace, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Then in Romans, he talks about this mind of the spirit. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. When you live your life that you're in charge, when you live your life that you're going to do what you feel and what you think, it creates conflict and chaos conflict and conflict and chaos and you think the problem is other people when you submit to Christ as the boss of your life and you're like no I'm going to do what he says it creates peace for at first it creates peace between you and God and then it begins to create peace with you and other people and it creates peace with you and you. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to live your life submissive or rebellious? You're like, I'm not rebellious. I just, I'm still deciding. When you tell your kid, hey, listen, come on, let's go. Or I need you to eat your vegetables. Or it's time to go to bed. And they go, hey, 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 hey give me a minute. I want you to understand something, parents. That is out and out rebellion. They know exactly what they're doing. Uh, just let me do this first. You know what that means? I'm not doing it on your timetable. I am not submitting to you. I'm doing it my way. The same thing's true for us. Apathetic response. God, I'm just going to stay here in the middle. That's rebellion. It's the worst kind. What are you going to do? What God's word is offering us this morning is that when we submit, when we submit, it brings incredible freedom and stability and peace. There's lots of other things. In other words, we win the war. So you can start small. Starting small is this. You uh, are one of those people that every morning you set your alarm five minutes apart, three alarms, right? 
That's because you won't submit to the first one. Start small. Don't do that anymore. Set your alarm once and submit to it. Just start small. For others of you, you, you spend time God, with God when you feel like it. You need to set a specific time you're going to spend time with God at that time, every time, and submit to it. Like, oh, God's all hung up on that. He's not hung up on it. You need to get hung up on submitting. Stop being the ruler of your life. Guys, maybe you leave your socks on the floor. Ladies, maybe you leave your socks on the floor. I can't even imagine that. But anyway, maybe you do. And it bothers your spouse. Submit to that. Just take care of it. Start out small. Maybe there's something else you have. Just start out small and watch what happens as you submit and begin to live that life. Or you need, maybe you need to go big. Maybe there's something in your life that God has been working on you about. He's been pointing out in your life. You're, 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 you're very angry. And, and so whenever things go wrong, you, you, you throw submission out the window and, and you, you need to go, whoa, that's got to stop. I'm going to turn that around. Maybe you, you use language with your family that should never be used when you're in your home. And that, you need to go big. That needs to stop. It needs to stop now. And the way you're going to do it is you're going to submit your tongue to Christ. I don't know what it is, but maybe you need to go big. But whatever it is, I want you to enjoy the peace while you're doing it. What do you mean? We got just like, we got a week and a half, two weeks of summer left, Right? So, during this time, accept the peace that Christ has paid for for you. Submit to him. Take the mantle off your shoulders that you're in charge of everything. That the end result is up to you. That you're the one that's it's all about you. Take that and put it right on Christ and enjoy the peace. Let him be the one. You're, gonna, you're just going to submit to him. Enjoy the peace. And lastly, prepare for the big game. Uh, no, we're not talking about football. I think that's been canceled. They might still be doing the NFL, but I watch college. What's the big game? Well, this fall, this is what we're going to do as a church. This is what I want to invite you to be a part of. This is what our church is going to be focusing on this fall. We're going to submit ourselves then to God. We're going to submit ourselves then to God and resist the devil. You see, there's a spiritual war going on. And in this spiritual war, the devil wants you depressed, discouraged, and most of all, at war with other people. He wants you to live in drama all the time. And for, for a number of, of you, you may have been doing great. You, you, you didn't have that much drama. And then this whole shutdown thing came on, and you're in drama. That's what they want. That's where they want you. So, what we're going to do is we're going to submit ourselves to God. We're going to go to war. Now, resist the devil. Now, don't worry. We're not going to get boxing gloves and paint Jesus on them and punch the devil in the face or any of those kinds of things. But we're going to be just as serious about it. Because that's actually not how you fight the devil. You don't fight the devil by focusing on the devil. You fight the devil by turning away from him and submitting to Christ. That's how you fight the devil. But you see, it's just as dramatic and it's just as uh, exciting and it takes just as much energy to turn and submit as it does to focus on the devil. And that's what we're going to do. And the Bible says he's going to flee from you. How are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to fart, we're going to start with uh, Spirit Day. Now, uh, I, I mentioned this a bit earlier, but there's a number of people I've been talking to and... and and I've, I've experienced this too. Uh, just last week, I said to people after church, I think the church is starting to bubble again. Because for the longest time, I felt like you'd left. Like, you weren't here anymore. Because I would come to the campus, and you're not here. So the only feeling that I could come up with was, you left me. Like, well, we didn't leave you. They told us we couldn't come. I understand what they told you. But I felt like you left me. I think all of us are feeling that. I think you feel that too. It's like you're lonely. 
So what's Spirit Day about? First and foremost, Spirit Day is about us communicating to each other. We're here. We're still here. We still care about each other. We still are trying to follow Christ. We're still a family. And so to do that, you've got to submit. You have got to, on purpose, go, you know what? I'm going to be there at that time, and I'm going to register. Now, I, I, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited because I can see you, right? And streamers, I, I feel you. I can't see you. I want you to know, because there's no difference. We're all one family. But when, we, when they came and they told me, listen, we had to turn some people away this morning. I was like, yes, they're back, they're coming back. Now, I know you haven't left, I get that, I know that, but that's how it feels, Does that makes sense? So on spirit day, you got to submit, which means you got to do two things. One, commit to being here if you can, and commit to communicating you're with us if you can. Streamers, this is important. you got to communicate, you got to register, and you got to communicate through the chats, through the different ways. We're here. We're here. It's important. you got to submit to do it. The next thing is the stronger together in prayer. So there's a piece to this that we haven't revealed yet. I'm going to reveal it to you this morning. Don't tell Pete Ross. He's actually in charge of this campaign. And I didn't, I didn't run this by him yet. But, so don't tell him. We'll pretend I didn't do it. A part of this is that we're going we're gonna to learn how to pray for a breakthrough. Now, it's not, that as a, it's not that we haven't prayed for breakthroughs before. We've never done this as a church, though. And said, this is it. This is the breakthrough we're praying for. God, this is the breakthrough we're asking you to do. And we're going to do that together. I just sense that you need a breakthrough. I sense you don't even know what the breakthrough is. We don't even know what it is. But we need it. So you got to submit to be a part of Stronger Together. It's six weeks long. you gotta, you got to submit and go from October through the end of November, I'm going to be in. I'm going to schedule this thing. I'm going to be here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be a part of it. What they asked me to do, I'm going to do, which leads us to groups and joining a group. Critical. I mean super important. Now, the beauty of the streaming thing is, no matter where you are, you get to be a part of one of our groups. The beauty of it is, no matter where you are in terms of being able to become on Sunday mornings, we, we can Zoom in group people, and it's awesome, right? So, so that's beautiful, but you got to submit to do that. And lastly, minister to one another. Let's come back to these bags, right? Here's this, this little opportunity to minister to somebody. Let's jump all over those things. Guys, people need you to call them and text them and follow up. They need you to drop off little desserts. They need you to drop off notes. They need you to do that. But that takes submission. That means I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to identify a couple of people. I'm going to pour into those people's lives. That takes submission. That's what we're going to do. Because what are we going to do? We're going to submit to God, resist the devil. We're going to fight the spiritual war, not each other. In your homes, fight the spiritual war, not each other. At work, fight the spiritual war, not each other. Submit to God. And watch what happens. Stability, freedom, peace. Let's pray. Lord, there's many, many times in our lives that we say, God, give us freedom. We pray for freedom. God, give us stability. We need stability. And you've, you've made it crystal clear to us that that's not what we're going to ask for. What, what we want is we want submissive hearts. We want to follow you. And what you've said is that you would give us that. We want to submit to putting on your armor. To trusting you for what's true, not our feelings. For trusting you for what will lead to a life worth living, 
Not our feelings, not people, not ideas, not movements. Lord, we have asked for peace over and over again. For many people, it's the number one thing. I just want peace. I just want peace. God, give me peace. And you've made this crystal clear. Peace does not come because you sprinkle it on us. It comes because we hand in rebellion for submission. We hand in, we're in charge. We're responsible. It's about me. We're going to hand that in. Jesus, you're responsible. Jesus, you're in charge. Jesus, this day of my life is your life. I'm here to follow you. Lord Jesus, I pray for every person to, no, no, take that back. Every person, I invite you to pray this prayer with me, to say this to Jesus with me. Jesus, I am done trying to get the world, my family, my spouse, my children, my boss, my government to submit to me. At this moment, Jesus, I submit myself to you. I follow you. I trust you. You do with the world what you want. In your name we pray. Amen. As we go to worship, as we go to singing, Go back to that place where you emptied your mind and your heart. Experience the presence of God. And whatever He whispers to you, commit to submit, submit to it this week. Then sing that to Him. As you sing these words, have that conversation with Him. Let's worship.
Church, we just learned what it is to submit and what submission really truly means. It means that our Father has set us free so that the chains and slavery that is sin will no longer define our identity. That we know we are who God says we are because he sent his son to die, to pour his blood on us as that sacrifice that we can say we were chosen. We're no longer forsaken. As you know this to be true, church, I invite you to sing these words with conviction with truth for knowing who you belong to. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. This week, when the muscles begin to tighten up, the stomach begins to cringe, and there's all that stress. Whoa, whoa, time out. Don't listen to the evil one. Listen to Jesus say, no, no, no. You are who I say you are. Submit to him. And live in peace. Just let it flow off your hearts. Let it flow off your back and have an incredible, amazing, peaceful couple of weeks. Great to be with you.